Welcome back to Aurora Tech Channel. In this video, we will make a drawer in Fusion 360. This will be a universal drawer, which means you only need to design it once. If you want a different size drawer, you can simply change some parameters and Fusion 360 will adjust the 3D model automatically. First, like all other 3D models, we will start with getting the dimensions. In my case, I want to make some drawers for my CNC machine. Since the gap between the machine base and the table is about 62 millimeters, the height of the drawer would be 60 millimeters. This gap is about 600 millimeters wide. In this case, I will make three drawers. The width and depth would be 200 by 200, and the height would be 60 millimeters. We will start with a 2D sketch. You can click Create Sketch and select a plane, or you can just use the keyboard shortcut R to create a rectangle. This time, I will select the X plane starting from the origin. The size of this rectangle is 200 millimeters by 60 millimeters. Now we have the outside box of the drawer. The inner drawer has to be smaller in order to fit. So if we make the thickness of the wall 2 millimeters, we need to make the inner drawer 2.5 millimeters smaller. As 2 millimeters is the wall's thickness, 0.5 millimeters is the clearance space. Instead of drawing another smaller rectangle, we can create an offset from the existing rectangle. Press the keyboard hotkey S, which means search. Type offset, and the first one with one black and blue line is the one we want. Select the rectangle and enter 2.5 as the offset value. Click OK, and Fusion will draw a rectangle with a 2.5 millimeter offset on each side. If you want a different rectangle, you can drag it to the size you want, or just enter a positive or negative number, depending on which direction you want to offset. As you can see, I also added a handle on the drawer. We can draw another rectangle at the center to make the handle. First, we need to find the center of the existing rectangle. There are many ways to do this, but I will show you two methods that I normally use. First, I will draw two lines from corner to corner, just like how you would find the center on a piece of wood. Then, change the lines to construction lines, and draw a center rectangle from the center point. Let's say the size is 100 millimeters by 10 millimeters. Now, you can see that the handle rectangle is also constrained, as its color is black. The second method to do this is to draw a two-point rectangle. Place it roughly at the center and enter the same size, which is 100 millimeters by 10 millimeters. Then select the line tool. When you move the cursor along the top line of the handle rectangle, it will change to a X cross. Once it reaches the center, it will change to a triangle. Now that you are at the center of the line, we can start the line here. This line will connect the center of the handle rectangle to the offset rectangle. Do the same and move the cursor along the top line of the offset rectangle. Once it reaches the center, we can click the mouse again and finish the line here. Then, draw another line to connect the left line of the handle rectangle to the left line of the offset rectangle. Press the escape key on your keyboard to exit the line tool. Use the control or shift key to select both lines and then click the horizontal or vertical alignment button. They will be aligned to the horizontal or vertical axis, whichever is closer. This will also move the handle rectangle to the center and constraint. Finally, press the escape key and select these two lines again. We want to change them to construction lines. Press the button here or press the X key on the keyboard. Now, our 2D sketch is finished. Press finish sketch and we can use this sketch to extrude all the bodies we need. Press the E key to extrude. Select everything and extrude our first body, the outside box of the drawer, and enter 200 millimeters. Since this is a solid box, we want it to be hollow. We can use the shell tool. Press the S key on the keyboard to search, type shell, and as you can see, there are two shell tools. 
we will use the first one since we are working on a solid body. The second one is for mesh, which we may use in the future when we work with imported mesh. But for now, to keep things simple, we will just choose the first blue shell tool and select the front surface of the box. Enter 2mm and it will create a hollow box with a 2mm wall thickness on all sides. The outside box of the drawer is now done. Next, we can extrude the drawer from the same sketch and use the browser to show the sketch. Press the E key to extrude, select the offset rectangle and the handle, and this time, we just want to extrude 198mm instead of 200mm. Since the thickness of the wall at the back is 2mm, we want the drawer to fit inside the box. Instead of join, we want to create a new body that won't stick to the outer box. Now we have two bodies. Let's rename body1 to box and body2 to drawer. Just triple click the body name and you can enter a new name for each of them. Now, if you hide the drawer and sketch, you will only see the box. If you hide the box and show the drawer, it will show another solid box. We will do the same to the drawer to make it hollow. Press the S key to search, type shell, and this time we will select the top surface of the drawer. Enter the same 2mm thickness and it will hollow out the drawer from the top and leave 2mm walls. Finally, we will extrude the handle. Use the browser to show the sketch again, press E to extrude, and we will select the handle rectangle. We can draw it to the height we want, or we can just enter negative 10 millimeters. We have a handle here, but if you are familiar with 3D printing, you may realize that if we print the drawer like this, we need to add support to the print bed, which I don't want. In this case, I will add a fillet. Select this line. If you enter 10, the angle is still not enough to print without support, so let's try 20. Okay. It should be fine to print without support. At the top of the handle, we also want to make it hollow so we can easily use our fingers to grab the handle of the drawer. I will use the shell tool again. Select the top of the handle, enter 2mm as the wall thickness, and it looks perfect. The drawings are now done. Before we can export these two bodies to print them, remember what I said about a universal drawer? For me, I always print similar drawers in different sizes because I don't want to have to redesign it again if I only need it in a different size. We're going to use something called user parameters in Fusion 360, which is very convenient. It's pretty easy to use this feature. Select modify and change parameters. There is an option for us to add user parameters. Press the Add button, enter width, and the unit will be millimeters. Enter 200 as the expression. Repeat the same process to add depth. In our case, enter 200 millimeters, add height, enter 60 millimeters, add wall, and enter the thickness of the wall, which is 2 millimeters add clearance, and enter 0.5 millimeters. Okay, we have set up all the parameters and their values. Now, we can replace the numbers in our drawings to these parameters. First, we will start with the sketch. Double click it to edit the sketch. Replace the 200 millimeters with width, and replace 60 millimeters with height. For the handle, we can replace 100 millimeters with width divided by 2. The height of the handle is height divided by 6, so the width of the handle will be 50% of the total width, and the height of the handle will be 1 sixth of the total height. We also want to replace 2.5 as the offset value to wall plus clearance. Click Finish Sketch, and the drawing will look the same. We also want to replace the depth of the drawer. Click on the extrude icon on the timeline, and for the box, we want to extrude depth instead of 200 millimeters. 
For the drawer, we want to extrude depth minus the wall. For the handle, you can keep it as 10 or change it to height divided by 6. Finally, we will replace the value of the shell with the wall parameter. Click on the timeline, and for the shell of the handle, replace 2 millimeters with wall. Do the same to the shell of the drawer and the box, so all of them will follow the wall parameter. Now, if I want a drawing that is 150 by 150 by 35, we can go straight to Modify, Change Parameters, and enter the new values. The design will be updated automatically. When you start a new design and want to use parameters, you can always set up the parameters and values first, so you don't have to go back and forth to replace the numbers. Okay, we can now export the bodies to STL files and 3D print them. Each of these large objects will take 8 to 10 hours to print. I used two CR-10S Pros to print at the same time, and set the print speed to 80 millimeters per second, but it still took about 7 hours to print one set of drawers. As you can see, I have another set of drawers with different sizes. I didn't change anything on the design, I just changed the parameters, and Fusion adjusted everything automatically. This is really handy. That's it for this video. If you like this video, please hit the like and subscribe button. My brother and I make a new video every weekend, so check out my channel on Mondays and you'll see something new. See you next week.